Good afternoon. Uh, today we're going to look at Unit 13, Chapter 20, the lymphatic system and lymphoid organs and tissues. You might hear some children in the background. Uh, I'm at the park doing this presentation. Did you know that the body contains hundreds of bean-sized organs that are critical to fighting off infections? These organs are the lymph nodes, which are the principal lymphoid organs of the body. Lymphoid organs work in conjunction with the lymphatic system to provide a structural basis for your body's immune system. As a healthcare professional, it's critical that you understand the structure and function of the lymph nodes so that you can properly check for signs of infection in your patients. During infection, the lymph nodes, which are usually unnoticeable, will become swollen and tender and are easily felt or palpated on the patient's body, especially in the neck region. A solid understanding of the anatomy and physiology of the lymph nodes and other lymphoid organs will enable you to properly evaluate your patients for signs of infection. Lymphatic system and lymphoid organs and tissues. Lymphatic system returns fluids leaked from the blood vessels back to blood and it consists of three parts. The first part is the a network of lymphatic vessels called lymphatics. Second is lymph, which is the fluid in the vessels. And third are the lymph nodes that will cleanse the lymph. Lymphoid organs and tissues provide the structural basis of the immune system by housing the phagocytic cells and the lymphocytes. Structures will include the spleen, thymus, tonsils, lymph nodes, and other lymphoid tissues. Section 20.1 Lymphatic System. So the lymphatic system returns interstitial fluid and leaked plasma proteins back to the blood via the lymphatic vessels, which is an elaborate network of drainage vessels. It circ circulates about three liters of interstitial fluid per day. Once interstitial fluid enters the lymphatics, it is called lymph. Distribution and structure of lymphatic vessels. Lymphatic vessels offer a one-way system ensuring lymph flows only toward the heart. Lymph, lymph vessels include the lymphatic capillaries and larger lymphatic vessels. So the lymphatic capil capillaries are blind-ended vessels that weave between the tissue cells and blood capillaries. They are absent from bones, teeth, and bone marrow. Once they were thought they were once thought to be absent from the central nervous system, but now they are found to be present but limited to locations in the meninges, uh, which is the covering of the uh, brain, where they help to drain the interstitial fluid and the CSF or cerebral spinal fluid. The lymphatic capillaries are similar to blood capillaries but more more permeable. They can can take up larger molecules and particles that blood capillaries cannot. For example, things like proteins, cell debris, pathogens, and cancer cells. They can act as the route for pathogens or cancer cells to travel throughout the body. Figure 20.1, distribution and special features of lymphatic capillaries. Uh, so here we see on in uh, figure A, the top figure, we have the uh, blood capillaries uh, that are draining uh, through their lymphatic capillaries. Uh, they're draining fluid, uh, interstitial fluid that went from the blood capillaries into the lymphatic capillaries. And then there's collecting lymphatic vessels with valves, lymph nodes, lymphatic trunk, lymphatic duct that is going to bring it directly to the heart. Uh, and then from the heart, there's the arterial system, uh, the aorta, the arteries, the arterioles that bring it into the blood capillaries. And then, um, so that's, you know, the fluid that doesn't get, uh, doesn't come back is going to be, uh, it, it will find its way back, uh, but uh, the venous return, we can see the venous system on the left. Uh, at the bottom, we can see uh, how the uh, blood capillaries and lymphatic capillaries are intertwined. The lymphatic capillaries uh, have an increased permeability due to two specialized structures. 
The first one is the endothelial cells that overlap loosely to form a one-way one way mini, mini valves and the second are mini valves that are anchored by collagen filaments to the matrix so these will increase in the extracellular fluid volume uh, and it opens so sorry increases in the extracellular fluid volume opens the mini valves even more uh, decreases in the extracellular fluid volume uh, uh, will cause mini valves to close uh, lactales, these are specialized lymph capillaries present in the intestinal mucosa and their job is uh, it, it, to absorb digestive fat and deliver fatty lymph chyle to the blood. Figure 20.1b, uh, so distribution and special features of lymphatic capillaries. So lymphatic capillaries are blind ended tubes in which adjacent endothelial cells overlap each other, forming flap-like mini-valves. Larger lymphatic vessels. So lymph capillaries drain into increasingly larger vessels called collecting lymphatic vessels. Uh, these consist of collecting vessels, the trunks and ducts. Uh, they have structures and tunics that are similar to veins except have thinner walls with more internal valves and anastomose more frequently. Collecting vessels in the skin travel with superficial veins, but deep vessels travel with arteries. Lymphatic trunks, um, which are formed by the union of the largest collecting vessels, drain large areas of the body, and they're named for the regions of the body they drain. So there's the paired lumbar, paired bronchomediastinal, uh, paired subclavian, paired jugular trunks, and single intestinal trunk. Lymph is delivered from the trunks into one of two large lymphatic ducts. The right lymphatic duct that, duct that drains the right upper arm and right side of the head and thorax. And the thoracic duct that drains the rest of the body. In about half of individuals, it starts out as an enlarged sac called the cisterna chyli. Each empties the lymph into venous circulation at the junction of the internal jugular and subclavian veins on its own side of the body. Figure 20.2, major lymphatic trunks and ducts. Uh, you can see the, um, um, the uh, left lumbar trunk, the intestinal trunk, uh, the right lumbar trunk, the thoracic duct, uh, the left bronchomediastinal trunk, the right bronchomediastinal trunk. Uh, then there's the left subclavian um, and the right subclavian trunk, the left jugular and right jugular trunk. And uh, you can see them emptying into the uh, close close to the veins. So the right lymphatic duct drains the lymph from the right upper limb and the right side of the head and thorax and it empties into the blood at the junction of the right internal jugular and subclavian veins. Whereas the thoracic duct drains the lymph from the rest of the body and empties into the blood at the junction of the left internal jugular and subclavian veins. Figure 20.3, the lymphatic system, shows you the uh, system of vessels, lymphatic vessels and ducts. And specifically the ones that are drained by the right lymphatic duct and the ones drained by the thoracic duct. Clinical homeostatic imbalance 20.1, lymphangitis, is a condition in which the lymphatic vessels appear as painful red lines under the skin. It's caused by inflammation of larger lymphatic vessels that contain vasovasora. The vasovasora become congested with blood, and the larger lymphatics, like the blood vessels, receive their nutrients from branching vasovasorum. Lymph transport. So the lymph system is a low pressure system, just like the lymph venous system. Lymph is propelled by the same mechanism, the milking action of the skeletal muscle, pressure changes in the thorax during breathing, and valves that prevent the backflow, uh, also pulsations of nearby arteries, and contractions of smooth muscle in the walls of lymphatics. 
Physical activity increases flow of lymph. Immobilization of area keeps the needed inflammatory material in the area for faster healing. Clinical homeostatic imbalance 20.2. Lymphedema is a severe localized edema. It's caused by anything that prevents the normal return of lymph to blood. Uh, examples are tumors blocking lymphatics or removal of lymphatics during cancer surgery. Lymphedema may improve if some lymphatic pathways remain and enlarge. Um, section 20.2, lymphoid cells, tissues, and organs. Lymphoid cells. Lymphoid cells consist of one, immune cells, Immune system cells are found in lymphoid tissue and supporting cells that form lymphoid tissue structures. So let's talk about the immune system cells. Lymphocytes, these are cells of the adaptive immune system. They mature into one of two main types. The T cells are called, also known as T lymphocytes and the B cells, also known as the B lymphocytes. T cells and B cells protect against antigens. Uh, anything, uh, basically an antigen is anything that the body perceives as foreign. Examples of antigens would be bacteria, toxins, viruses, mis mismatched red blood cells, and cancer cells. So the T cells manage the immune response and some also attack and destroy infected cells. Uh, B cells, on the other hand, produce plasma cells and these secrete antibodies and antibodies mark antigens for destruction by phagocytosis or other means. Other lymphoid immune cells are macrophages, which uh, as the name suggests, big eaters. Macro is big phages, uh, so they have phagocytic uh, properties. They phagocytize foreign substances and help activate T cells. And there's also dendritic cells. These capture antigens and deliver them to lymph nodes and they also uh, play a role in activating T cells. Uh, the other component of lymphoid cells are supporting lymphoid, l su supporting lymphoid cells. An example are reticular cells that produce reticular fibers called stroma in lymphoid organs. Uh, the stroma is a network-like support that acts as scaffolding for immune cells. Figure 20.4, reticular connective tissue in a human lymph node. So here we can see a macrophage, reticular cells on reticular fibers, the lymphocytes, um, and that's it. Main functions of lymphoid tissue are one, it houses and provides proliferation sites for the lymphocytes. And two, it offers surveillance vantage points for lymphocytes and macrophages as they filter through the lymph. Uh, lymphoid tissue is largely composed of reticular connective tissue, which is a type of loose connective tissue. And the macrophages live on the reticular fibers. Uh, it also has spaces between the fibers that offer a place for lymphocytes to occupy when they return from patrolling body, patrolling the body. Two main types of lymphoid tissues are diffuse lymphoid tissue, which is a, lo a loose arrangement of lymphoid cells and some reticular fibers, and it's found in virtually every body organ. Larger coll collections in the lamina propria of mucous membranes. The second type of lymphoid tissue are lymphoid follicles or nodules that are solid spherical bodies consisting of tightly packed lymphoid cells and reticular fibers. They contain germinal centers of proliferating B cells, may form part of larger lymphoid organs or nodes. Um, isolated aggregations of Peyer's patches uh, found in the ileum as we know and in the appendix. Lymphoid organs are grouped into two functional categories. Primary lymphoid organs, these are areas where T and B cells mature, such as in the red bone marrow and the thymus. The T and B cells originate in the bone marrow, but only B cells mature there. T cells will mature in the thymus gland. Secondary lymphoid organs, these are areas where mature lymphocytes first encounter their antigen and become activated. Uh, examples are the nodes, the spleen, MALT, which stands for mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, 
and diffuse lymphoid tissues. Figure 20.5, lymphoid organs. So the primary lymphoid organs are the thymus and the red bone marrow, and the secondary lymphoid organs are the lymph nodes, uh, which were shown uh, complete, uh, complete uh, where you have a more um, complete distribution uh, in figure 20.3, the tonsils, uh, the spleen, and Peyer's patches in the ileum and uh, the appendix. Section 20.3, lymph nodes. So lymph nodes are the principal secondary lymphoid organs of the body. Hundreds of nodes are found throughout the body, and most are embedded deep in connective tissue in clusters along lymphatic vessels. Some are nearer to, body, to the body surface in the inguinal, axillary, and cervical regions of the body where collecting vessels converge into trunks. Uh, again, figure 20.3. Uh, shows the components of the lymphatic system. Two main functions of lymph nodes. One is cleansing, cleansing the lymph, so they act as lymph filters. The macrophages remove and destroy microorganisms and debris that enter the lymph, and these will prevent unwanted substances from being delivered to the blood. Uh, second main function of lymph nodes is immune system activation, so they offer a place for lymphocytes to become activated and mount an attack against antigens. The structure of a lymph node, so it varies in shape and size, but most are bean shaped. They're small, less than 2.5 centimeters. Uh, they're surrounded by external, uh, an external fibrous capsule. The capsule fibers extend inward as trabeculae that divide the node into compartments. Two histologically distinct regions of the node are the outer cortex and the inner medulla. Cortex is the superficial or outer area of cortex contain, uh, that contains follicles with germinal centers that are heavy with dividing B cells. And the deep cortex, so there's a superficial cortex and a deep cortex instead that houses T cells in transit. So the T cells circulate continuously among blood, lymph nodes, and the lymph. Uh, abundant numbers of dendritic cells are closely associated with both T and B cells, and they play a role in activating both lymphocytes. The medulla contains medullary cords that extend inward from the cortex and contain B cells, T cells, and plasma cells. Lymph sinuses are found throughout a node and consist of large lymphatic capillaries spanned by crisscrossing reticular fibers. Macrophages reside on the fibers, checking for and phagocytizing any foreign matter. Section 20, uh, figure 20.6a, a longitudinal view of the internal structure of a lymph node and associated lymphatics. So notice the cortex, uh, which contains the lymphoid follicle germinal center and subcapsular uh, sinus, um, the um, medulla, which contains the medullary cord and medullary sinus. Uh, notice the trabeculae, the capsule that, go, that surrounds it, uh, afferent and efferent lymphatic vessels. Figure 20.6b is a photomicrograph of part of a lymph node. You can see the uh, lymphoid follicles, the trabeculae, subcapsular sinus, the capsule itself, uh, medullary cords, and medullary sinuses. Circulation in the lymph nodes. Lymph enters the convex side of the node via afferent lymphatic vessels. It travels through large sub subcapsular sinus and then into smaller sinuses that are found throughout the cortex and medulla. The lymph then enters the medullary sinuses. Finally, it exits the concave side at the hilum via efferent lymphatic vessels. The presence of fewer efferent vessels causes the flow to somewhat stagnate, which allows the lymphocytes and macrophages to time to function. Uh, lymph travels through the several nodes. Homeostatic, clinical homeostatic imbalance 20.3, bubos. 
this is an inflamed swollen ten tender lymph nodes that result when nodes are overwhelmed by what they are trying to destroy the condition is often referred to as swollen glands bubos are sometimes pus filled the bubonic plague was named after the chief clinical feature of this disease the lymph nodes can become secondary cancer sites if met metastasizing cancer cells become trapped in the node uh, cancer infiltrated lymph nodes are swollen but usually not painful a fact that helps distinguish cancerous nodes from those infected by microorganisms section 20.4 the spleen the spleen is a blood rich organ about the size of a fist it's located in the left side of the abdominal cavity just below the stomach it's the largest lymphoid organ and it's served by the splenic artery and vein which enter and exit at the helium functions are it's a site of lymphocyte proliferation and immune surveillance and response and it cleanses blood of aged blood cells and platelets and the macrophages will remove debris Point seven a shows a diagram of the spleen the anterior view notice how the splenic artery and splenic vein splenic artery enters splenic vein exits the uh, spleen functional functions of the spleen are it stores the breakdown products of red blood cells like iron for later reuse uh, it also stores blood platelets and monocytes for release into the blood when needed. It may, it may be the site of fetal erythrocyte production. Uh, the spleen is encased by a fibrous capsule and also has trabeculae. Histologically, it consists of two components, white pulp and red pulp. The white pulp is a site where immune function occurs. It contains mostly lymphocytes on reticular fibers. The white pulp clusters are found around the central arteries and they appear as islands of white in a sea of red pulp. The red pulp is the site where old blood cells and blood-borne pathogens are destroyed. It's rich in red blood cells and macrophages that engulf them. And it's composed of splenic cords, which is reticular tissue, that separate the blood-filled splenic sinusoids, which are venous sinuses. Figure 20.7b is a diagram of spleen histology. Notice the outer capsule. It also has trabecula, uh, splenic cords, splenic sinusoids, arterioles and capillaries, and then it has the red pulp and the white pulp. And again, notice the splenic artery and splenic vein. 20.7d, this is a photomicrograph of spleen tissue. You can see the capsule surrounding the white pulp and the red pulp. Clinical homeostatic imbalance 20.4. So the spleen has a thin capsule, so direct blow or severe infection may cause it to rupture, spilling blood into the peritoneal cavity. Splenotomy is the uh, surgical removal of a ruptured spleen. Once it was the standard treatment to prevent hemorrhage and shock, but it has been discovered that the spleen can often repair itself. Frequency of emergency splenotomies has decreased dramatically. If the spleen must be removed, the liver and bone marrow take over most of its functions. In younger children uh, less than 12, the spleen will regenerate if a small part is left. Section 20.5, MALT, which is mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. Lymphoid tissues in the mucous membranes throughout the body. It protects from pathogens trying to enter the body. It's found in the mucosa of the respiratory tract, genital urinary organs, digestive tract. That's what uh, that's where we first saw it, I think. Uh, the largest collections of malt is found in the tonsils, pears patches, and the appendix. The tonsils are the simplest lymphoid organs. They form a ring of lymphatic tissue around the pharynx, and they appear as swellings of mucosa. They're named according to their location. The palatine tonsils are at the posterior end of the oral cavity, the largest of tonsils and most often the ones that are infected. The lingual tonsil 
is a lumpy collection of follicles at the base of the tongue. The pharyngeal tonsil, also called adenoids, located in the posterior wall of the nasopharynx. And the tubal tonsils, these surround the openings of the auditory tubes into the pharynx. The tonsil's function, function is to gather and remove pathogens in food or air. They contain follicles with germinal centers and scattered lymphocytes. They are not fully encapsulated. Uh, the overlying epithelium invaginates, forming tonsillar crypts. Bacteria or particulate matter enters the crypts where they are trapped and destroyed. Uh, risky to lure bacteria into tissues, but allows immune cells to become activated and build memory cells against these potential pathogens. Figure 20.8, the histology of the palatine tonsil. Uh, so there is the location of the palatine tonsil, and we can see the germinal centers in lymphoid follicles as well as tonsillar crypts. Payer's patches, these are clusters of lymphoid follicles in the wall of the distal portion of the small intestine, i.e. the ileum. They're also called aggregated lymphoid nodules. They're structurally similar to the tonsils. The, they are strategically located. Uh, in fact, uh, it, it helps, their location helps in uh, destroying bacteria, preventing them from breaching the intestinal wall, and generating memory lymphocytes. Figure 20.9 shows the location of the Payer's patches. Um, you can see um, in the diagram and uh, histologically. The appendix is an offshoot of the first part of the large intestine. It contains a large number of lymphoid follicles. The location aids in functions like the Payer's patches, so to destroy bacteria, preventing them from breaching the intestinal wall, and in generating memory lymphocytes. So uh, figure 20.5, again, if you look at the secondary lymphoid organs, we've seen the tonsils, the spleen, Payer's patches, and the appendix. The thymus is a bilobed lymphoid organ found in the inferior neck. It extends into the mediastinum and partially overlies the heart. It functions as lymphoid organ where the T cells mature. It's most active and largest in, the saw in size during childhood, but it stops growing during adolescence and then it gradually shrinks or atrophies. Uh, it still produces immunocompetent cells, though more slowly. Thymus is broken into lobules that contain the outer cortex and the inner medulla. The cortex contains rapidly dividing lymphocytes, which is the bulk of thymic cells and scattered macrophages. The medulla contains fewer lymphocytes and thymic carpuscle, carpuscles. Thymic carpuscles are where regulatory T cells develop. Uh, regulatory T cells are, is a type of T cell that helps to prevent autoimmunity. So basically, uh, prevents the, uh, the immune system from attacking uh, the cells in the body. The thymus differs from other lymphoid organs in important ways. It has no follicles because it lacks B cells. It does not directly fight antigens, uh, and it functions strictly in T lymphocyte maturation. It contains the blood thymus barrier that keeps immature T lymphocytes isolated from any antigens to prevent premature activation. Uh, the stroma is made, made up of epithelial cells, not reticular fibers, and it provides the environment in which T lymphocytes become immunocompetent. Here is a section, uh, figure 2010, of the thymus. Um, so histologically, it has a capsule, the outer cortex, and inner medulla, and thymic carpuscles in the medullary region. 20.1 is a summary of lymphoid organs and tissues, and you can see their uh, lymph nodes, spleen, malt, and thymus. Uh, their major functions, whether they have a capsule, whether they have a cortex and medulla, whether they have lymphoid follicles or a stroma, and some special features uh, of each one of those uh, organs or tissues.